think in terms of actual treatment of stones in endoneurology, I think patience is the real key. Patience and understanding what uh, types of disposables and what type of equipment is available to help you help your patient. This is a case of an elderly gentleman. He's got two stones and they're really obstructing his distal left ureter. And he uh, has an elevated serum creatinine. He's not having too much pain, uh, which is a little bit concerning because I'm worried that the kidney is shut down, but his creatinine is already elevated. So the difficult part about this is um, he wasn't uh, fully asleep. He was actually awake and was just sedated. And the hard part was these stones were really, really obstructing. They were really stuck in there. And we had a very difficult time even getting a guide wire past these stones. So right now we've got a, a cystoscope inside and the patient is awake in the lithotomy position. In Canada, OR time is a little bit short, so one of the things we wanted to do was uh, um, basically just buy him some time, pre-stent him, which, is, which, which has been shown to be helpful for reducing um, sto uh, or increasing stone free rates at a later date. So right now we've got a ureteral catheter in the distal ureter, and we're going to shoot some contrast up into the ureter. And essentially you'll see here that no contrast is going up the ureter at this time. So right now we've got a sensor guide wire, so this is a, a hybrid combination wire with a hydrophilic tip. And that wasn't going by, so we've actually switched over here now to a completely hydrophilic wire. And using it through a 5 French ureteral catheter, we're just going to gently probe with this hydrophilic wire to see if we can get it past the stone. Now one tip is not to basically have your ureteral catheter jammed right up to the, to the ureteral stone. At the area of impaction, it's really quite edematous and inflamed, and your wire's going to want to go through the path of least resistance, and this could be, mean making a perforation. So using fluoroscopy, we're using this hydrophilic wire and just trying to uh, push this wire through past the obstructing stones. Once the wire goes up a little bit, you can follow it up with the ureteral catheter, trying to basically buttress it to give it a little bit more backing. Remember, by pushing this guide wire into the ureter, it's essentially like pushing rope uphill, and we need something to back us up. So here, I'm using an 810 dilator. This is an 8 French dilator, followed by a 10 French sheath. And what we're going to do with this, this 10 French sheath is going to stay in the ureter and come right outside the urethral meatus. Through that, we'll be able to put a catheter up. And then with that, we'll, we'll be able to buttress even more and help us uh, give that ureteral catheter a lot more backing in order to get the guide wire up. So that's the 10 French uh, sheath going in. Then we'll remove the 8 French dilator and leave that guide wire in. This just makes the ureter a lot stiffer and will make our, you know, pushing that rope uphill a lot easier. Here we've actually put in a 5 French angled ureteral catheter. With this angled ureteral catheter, we'll be able to better direct our guide wire around where the path of the stone uh, will, will let us go and hopefully, hopefully find the actual lumen of the ureter and get that guide wire by. Once we get this guide wire by, we really should be able to get a stent up, but our biggest problem is we can't get the guide wire by. You can see on the fluoroscopy here that we've got uh, basically some stranding here and essentially we've caused a perforation now because the contrast has gone outside of the ureter. So with gentle probing of the hydrophilic wire and manipulating the angled catheter and twisting it at the hub, we can basically try getting this guide wire uh, past this obstruction and it keeps wanting to go into the perforation because that's the path of least resistance, but you want to pull it back and essentially just keep probing with that wire and probing gently. I certainly don't want to inject much more contrast now because it's just going to really fill up the area and make it very difficult to see. Now the guide wire has actually managed to slip by, so with just patience and doing the exact same thing I was doing, we're able to get that guide wire up into the kidney and into the ureter. Now what I'm going to do is advance my ureteral catheter into the kidney and then shoot some contrast up to make sure that I just haven't gone and perforated. And indeed, you can see that there's quite severe hydronephrosis here and indeed the catheter is inside the very dilated kidney and inside the ureter. The catheter has buckled back on itself and what I'm going to do now is basically put a guide wire in and replace that ureteral catheter. So I like to use a very stiff wire with a nitinol core and right now I'm using the sensor guide wire. So now that I pull that angled catheter out, 
Basically, I have an angled uh, uh, sensor wire inside the kidney going through a 10 French sheath. Now I'm able to insert a 6 French stent over this guide wire, and I leave that 10 French sheath in. The reason why is because now I can really put with a lot of force uh, the stent up from the urethra right up into the ureter, and it'll help me bypass that obstruction. Because remember, putting a stent up is also like pushing rope uphill as well, too. With the pusher, I always make sure that the, obviously the radio pick end is, is visible. And then I follow with fluoroscopy to make sure that the stent goes up. Now that I see the stent inside of the renal pelvis, I pull the guide wire back to get a nice coil. And you'll see that I've left the string or the extraction string on the stent as well too. Now I always leave this on even if I'm going to take it off at the end because this allows me to manipulate the stent as I need to. I can pull it back, push it forward, or if the stent is too short, I can actually pull the stent right out. So now that I'm in the right location, I'm just making sure that the, the um, extraction string is in the right place. I break it, I hold, the, um, I hold the stent in place, and then pull the extraction string out. Then I will remove the 10 French dilator, and under fluoroscopy, just make sure I'm in the right location, and then pull out the middle of the guide wire, leaving the stent in place. So now the 10 French sheath is coming out leaving just the guide wire and my pusher in. And for males, I like to put the uh, pusher at the mid part of the pubic symphysis. Now that I remove the guide wire, this gentleman had a bit of a larger prostate, so I want to just make sure that I manipulate that um, stent to make sure that I get a nice coil on the bladder. And if I'm unsure, I'll actually put a cystoscope in to make sure that I see it. And there you see that the coil has gone very nicely and I've got a nice coil down in the bladder as well as in the kidney. His creatinine eventually fell down and came down to normal over the next two weeks, and then we'll be able to take him and do a, a definitive ureteroscopy at a later date. So we had to use a lot of tricks and maneuvers in order to get a guide wire passed, followed by a ureteral stent. If you only have a certain type of guide wire, or certain type of catheters, you may not be able to complete this. So certainly having a multitude of different kind of catheters and wires is really necessary for these difficult cases.